internet! Shouth is here, and it's time for another episode of Shoutstone. I am bringing you another Shoutcast from the Hearthstone beta, featuring our good friend Day9, as he heads into action once again. This is from one of his many streams where he takes some of his BlizzCon decks for test drives prior to his tournament run, which unfortunately didn't pan out as well as I think he would have hoped. But he did really well in some of these games, so uh, let's head into the action right now. It is... Thrall versus Jaina. Day 9, playing the part of Thrall, the Shaman. And Shinya, playing the part of Jaina, the Mage. Shinya, if some of you aren't familiar, Shinya is actually also a StarCraft player. And I, uh, I have cast some of his StarCraft matches before, too. Um, well, I, I, not really cast, but uh, I did some projects for the uh, ISTL, which is a team league. Um, and I, I used to do these like video recap packages, and I remember Shinya as being a part of it. I believe he was on... Uh, I don't remember the name of his team. But, uh, MYI, I think. I don't remember the full name of it, but... Anyway. Irrelevant. We're playing Hearthstone. This is Shoutstone. Game I know a lot better than I do, uh, StarCraft. That's for sure. So Shinya gonna kick things off with a Leper Gnome. Always a nice little way to start a game off, because it's a guaranteed couple points of damage to your the opposing hero. Uh, and if your the hero doesn't deal with it, then it's a constant two points of damage. So... It remains that kind of threat that your opponent's going to want to get rid of fairly early because, you know, it's, it's going to deal two damage to them regardless. It's unavoidable, so they might as well limit it to just the two. But we'll have to see how Day9 can respond. Doesn't look like he has very much in the way of options at this point, however, so it looks like he's going to get some good return on that Leper Gnome. Now he could coin out the Stormforged Axe and take it out with that. And that is the way he's going to go. So he will use the Stormforged Axe to get rid of that minion. And he'll eat 4 points of damage at max. So, still a good trade. Honestly, for, for 1 mana to get 4 points of damage, plus force your opponent to play a weapon and eat a durability, I think that's a great way to start. <laughs> you know, you can't really beat that. Alright, Shinya doesn't have much else in his hand, so he's going to go ahead and just ping Day 9 for a quick point of damage with Fire Blast. And Day9 has nothing he can do at this point, because he has that one point of mana on lockdown from Overload from that axe. So Shinya drops a Arcane Intellect to get a few more options. Day9 could drop that Feral Spirit, probably going to be one of the better options he has at this point. I don't really know if he... he has a lot of uh, spells and a few different totem options, but... I mean, he could put out that Mana Tide totem, get a nice stream of uh, cards going and really help load up his deck early, which could be nice. And his opponent doesn't really have much to shut it down with, so he could put that into play. Or he could certainly do the Feral Spirit on this turn, uh, but it's going to lock down two points. Yeah, he couldn't do that. All right, he's going to play Feral Spirit instead. That's going to give him a couple of two, three wolves with Taunt, which is always nice. Oh, hi, Day9. You messed up your stream there. There we go. <laughs> Quick glimpse of Day9 as he fouls up the display of his stream. All right, but with that play, with those Feral Wolves, or Feral Spirit, I guess I should say, he does put two of his mana points on Overload for the next turn. Key Fireball there. Does do a nice chunk of damage. Would it have been better served to take out a minion? We'll find out. <laughs> I really think we'll find out. So, this turn he could drop one of those Flame Tongue Totems and get a nice chunk of damage inbound. So this is going to be a 10 damage turn for day 9 here, and Shinya still has nothing to counter this threat. So, Fireball better to take those minions out? I think so. I think he may have, it might have been much better to use it. Oh, and he's going to burn another Fireball on day 9 instead. He's just trying to rain him down, like, big time. And, I mean, it could pan out if he's got some strong enough spell cards in there, but he's in a dangerous position. So there's Forked Lightning to clear the field again, and another... Oh, he's going to drop that Flame Tongue Totem. He can't flank. He can't hit both those minions because he can't stack them. But, what can he do here? Well, he looks like he's going to drop that Flame Tongue Totem. At least get some extra damage in there. Unfortunately, it doesn't stack because, well, it replaces the other Flame Tongue Totem. 
but it does give an extra couple points of damage. So now, it is 8 to 13. Shinya is in a risky spot. I mean, he, he's got a lot to deal with right now. He burned both of those fireballs on attacking day 9, and if he doesn't have enough to counteract it, you know, he's in just in a rough place. Alright, so he's going to Kona Cold, which will shut down a couple of those minions, and he will Frostbolt another one away. So a good little bit of control, but it could be too little too late. We're going to find out. It does have that Lava, that Fire Blast, or Lava Blast, excuse me, Lava Burst, whatever. You know, Shaman, Lava, Fire, Spell, six points of damage. Nearly has the game won. <laughs> but is he going to play it? I mean, it's really his only option right now. If he wants to play a Mana Tide Totem, I guess he can, but I don't think this game's going to last that much longer. I mean, if I were Day 9, I would just hit him with the Lava Burst and pass the turn. You know, pop a Totem. Well, he can't pop a Totem. Just hit him with the Lava Burst and pass the turn, man. That's what I do. But he said he's going to play that Mana Tide Totem. Try to get a few more options, I suppose. I mean, it is pretty much GG at this point if uh, Shinya can't get rid of at least... Well, if he can get rid of one of the minions... No, he's got to get rid of... Uh, basically everything that can deal damage. And that is not going to do it. All Day 9 has to do is hit that Lava Burst attack with anything else, and this game is over. So, I think Shinya may be out of options at this point. It was a quick game... But it could have gone either way. I, th I think the biggest mistake Shinya made, again, was playing those fireballs and just dealing straight damage to Day 9. You know, unless you've got the cards already in your hand to deal huge amounts of damage and to, like, burn your opponent down really fast, it's very risky to burn your spells on the opposing hero when, you're here, when your opponent has huge high-value minions on the field. And yeah, those wolves aren't exactly huge or high-high value, but they can be. Well, a good polymorph, but unfortunately it's just not going to do it. He's going to be able to take it out. But it still is not enough, so Shinya knows. I think he's at the end of his line. He's going to forfeit this matchup. Gives the win to Day 9. So there you have it. A quick little episode of uh, Shoutstone here. Short little 7-minute matchup, but hey, you know, better than nothing. Again, like I said, Shinya, you know, that's kind of what it comes down to. You make that calculated risk. You know, do you play those spell damage cards, or do you hold, you play them against minions? You know, take out those minions instead of burning down your opponent's health. Because it's just that last point of health that really matters. And I think that's what came back to bite him. But that is going to do it for this episode of Shoutstone. One thing I'd like to address, I got a comment recently on one of my videos that said I need to stop casting really one-sided matchups thing is, I don't watch these games before I cast them. I have no idea how short they're going to be, how long they're going to be, I have no idea how one-sided they're going to be, I have no idea who wins, who loses, because if I knew that, it would really, I think it would taint my cast. I wouldn't be able to cast, you know, from an element of analysis or, or, or surprise. I'd just be like reading from a pre-prepared script in my head. So, you know, I try to avoid that at all costs. There have been some cases where I've cast a game and I've had a technical issue, so I've had to recast it. And that happens like few and far between. But I try to avoid that, and that's why sometimes you get games that are seven minutes long. Sometimes you get games that are ridiculously one-sided. I have a lot of games to pick from. Sorry. What can I say? But anyway, that's going to do it for this episode of Shoutstone. Don't forget to subscribe for daily Hearthstone updates. And don't forget to like this video and leave a comment. Find me on Facebook and Twitter. My links are in the description below. And thanks so much for watching. I will see you folks next time.